Explaining Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion, an Airplane Analogy We have all likely boarded an airplane, say flying from Toronto to Vancouver, and find our seats either by walking past first class to economy, or maybe sitting comfortably at the front of the plane in first class. If you've ever sat in first class or paid attention to those who do, you will know first class comes with a variety of perks. You can board the plane first, it is more comfortable, you are served beverages and meals, and you have a bathroom reserved for only your class. You have much more space to recline your seat. Now you might be thinking, yes, there are more privileges in first class. But those sitting in first class paid more to the airline for their ticket than those in economy. They therefore deserve those perks. Some of those people worked hard to get here, advanced, and earned their seats at the front of the plane. But if we look closer, we will see that some of those folks earned their seat in first class based on their social network. They are friends or family with a pilot or flight attendants and received a free upgrade. Some of them may have family air miles to support the upgrade from their parents' accumulated points. Many of these folks are sponsored by their businesses or third parties to sit in first class because someone else decided they deserve to sit there given their work schedule. However, those sitting in first class all believe they deserve to sit there and sometimes don't see the privileges they have obtained. Now, if we take a closer look, we will also see that those benefiting from these perks are not just random people. They are mostly men with little diversity. But why is that? Maybe women and men of color do not want to sit at the front of the plane. But perhaps this is not the case. Women and people of color do want to sit in first class too. But some who boarded the plane didn't know that first class was open to just anyone, even though they could afford the ticket and qualified for this position. Some people felt they wouldn't be welcomed into the club culture that already existed in first class. And in spite of being excellent at their jobs, none of these women or men had sponsorships from their companies because perhaps their companies didn't see them as future leaders or didn't believe they deserved to be promoted to first class. Many people experience these barriers, and the barriers are compounded for women of color. Now let us tie this analogy into our context in the academy as we think of ways to overcome these barriers. We can think of first class passengers as full professors or department chairs and deans and other faculty being passengers in economy class. The airline is like the senate of the university and the captain is like the president of the university. These positions are divided by barriers that some folks can move through, but as it stands, many folks cannot. To overcome these barriers, the airline and its captain could write quotas into their policies so that first class must include 50% women and 50% men and people of color. In doing so, the airline achieved the result of equality. But people cry foul because some people might be seen to have received a free upgrade to first class based on their identity and therefore must not have worked as hard to get there. Plus, they are taking a seat from a deserving person who can no longer have a seat. This option is called a quality of outcome, determining the outcome targets from the top down. This is often not well received because it can contravene merit-based promotion, although it is sometimes used to bring about change faster. Alternatively, the airline and its captain could create policies that create an environment that is conducive to women and people of color entering first class positions by expanding the entry criteria and reducing barriers to enter first class. In the academic setting, that could be making all people aware of leadership opportunities, encouraging a diverse candidate pool, 
searching out excellent candidates and offering an unbiased selection process. And they would not promise seats to yes men or people in the captain's network. As part of this encouraging environment, they would make accommodations for women with small children by offering an additional airplane seat or a curtain for privacy, just as the academy would hold meetings at times appropriate for women with children and not exclude them from crucial conversations. This is an example of equality of opportunity, and this is what many equity initiatives try and engineer. And when this environment is created, diverse opinions and perspectives can make the academy more innovative and bring a fresh look to solving problems, which raises the bar of excellence for everyone. Furthermore, to preserve this meaningful engagement of diverse perspectives, it is up to the owner of the airline and the captain to maintain an environment of inclusive excellence and ensure that other members of first class don't whisper that she only got the seat because she was a woman or he had to sit in economy because a woman took his seat. Furthermore, many organizations try to advance equality of opportunity because it is the right thing to do, but others do not see the value of doing so. In this case, if the airline does not try and create an environment or the captain does not model it, after a while, women or people of color who work hard and are excellent at what they do but can never get a seat in first class will leave the airline and choose another one. And when the owners of the airline see that they are losing customers, or in the case of the university, lose excellent faculty members, they may be more apt to change their policies. Nevertheless, diverse perspectives enhance our academic production and innovation and help us avoid groupthink and increase institutional accountability. To this end, let's define a few important terms. Equity. This refers to the principle of fairness. Equity may be considered both an approach and a process that recognizes the existence of systemic social inequalities and introduces actions to proactively reduce or remove institutional, structural, and cultural barriers towards equal opportunity. Diversity refers to differences among people with respect to age, class, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, spiritual practice, etc. In the university setting, compositional diversity refers to the numeric and proportional representation of different peoples across many intersecting dimensions of social cultural group identities. Inclusion, making it all work. Inclusion is a sense of belonging and dignity, as well as the experience of meaningful engagement, empowerment, and equality of opportunity in any community. And finally, inclusive excellence is a concept that recognizes the integral relationship between diversity and quality in research, teaching, service, and governance. It envisions diversity and quality as two sides of the same coin.